There is a reason that that jury convicted him to death, and he deserves that. Good evening, and first at five, a victim's family simply devastated. That is their reaction after learning convicted killer Christian Longo would be spared the death penalty as Oregon's governor commuted his sentence along with more than a dozen others. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm David Molko. And I'm Laurel Porter. Longo is one of 17 convicted killers who will now face life in prison instead of the death penalty. Our Kylie Boshi spoke with the victim's family today and joins us in the newsroom. Kyle, this had to be really difficult news for them. You know, Penny Baker Duby got a phone call she wasn't expecting yesterday morning. An Oregon State employee called with, quote, bad news. The man who killed her sister and their three young children would be removed from death row and she'd have no say in the matter. It was a done deal. No one should have that power. I don't agree. Penny Baker Duby feels hurt and betrayed after Oregon's governor announced she would commute the sentences of all 17 inmates on Oregon's death row to life in prison without the possibility of parole. That means convicted killers like Christian Longo, who murdered Doobie's sister and their three young children, will be spared the death penalty. This isn't someone receiving a sentence unjustly that may be innocent. This is someone that deserves to die for what they've done. If anyone deserves to die for their crime, it is Chris. In 2003, a Lincoln County jury sentenced Longo to death for killing his wife, Mary Jane, and their three children, Zachary, Sadie, and Madison. Longo dumped their bodies into the water off the Oregon coast, then fled to Mexico. Before this happened, I did not have an opinion on the death penalty. I did not feel that that was my decision to make about anyone. After this happened, I have an opinion on the death penalty. Chris deserves to be dead for what he did. My family will never feel safe until Chris is no longer a part of this world. In an interview with KGW's Pat Doris, Governor Brown explained the death penalty is immoral, the penalty irreversible. I know that not everyone will agree with my decision, but I hope it is a further step uh, towards finality in this conversation. Doobie argues the governor should have consulted with families affected by the commutations. I think she needs to see some pictures and some videos of the lives that were lost. Instead, Doobie explains, many families are left devastated, devastated by the fact a death sentence has been commuted with a simple stroke of a pen. Others are speaking out as well. The mayor of Woodburn called the governor's decision an injustice. The father-son duo responsible for the 2008 Woodburn bank bombing that killed two police officers will have their death sentences commuted as well. And I imagine we'll hear from other families too. Thank you, Kyle. Portland city leaders are calling for a united front to tackle numerous public safety challenges, including a record number of homicides for a second year straight in the Rose City. The mayor and Multnomah County DA met with the media today. Blair Best is outside the Multnomah County Courthouse for us. Blair, this is the first time the two have been seen together in months. Laurel joining the mayor and DA today were Portland and Gresham police chiefs. Now the main takeaway from today is that we will only see a change in the increased crime on our streets until the city, county and local law enforcement all work together and collaborate. They're calling these levels of violent crime that we're seeing unacceptable. They talked of how they're confronting a public defense crisis, citing the record number of homicides this year. They also talked of bringing back, back school resource officers to Portland Public Schools again in the wake of recent shootings. SROs were discontinued in the wake of the George Floyd murder, and it's a controversial subject for parents and students. But the biggest issue for the DA is the need to invest in more prosecutors to get more criminals off the streets and keep them off the streets. Now, while they're working together to address these high level crimes such as homicides, they're also focusing on smaller crimes that affect community members every day while facing these unprecedented challenges. Here's what the Multnomah County DA and Portland's mayor have to say. Over the last two years, our community has been largely defined by a strain on our public safety system. From emergency operators, police, prosecutors, the courts, the jails and public defenders. These deficiencies aren't new, uh, but they have been made visible as we continue to reckon with the global pandemic that's exacerbated these resources to the point of breakage. 
Our community, I think everybody can agree, has endured unacceptable levels of violence and crime in recent years, which has pushed our public safety system from top to bottom to its full limit. Portland police also announced that next week they're hiring 14 more officers, bringing the department total to more than 800. Now, despite all of these challenges that they're facing, they, they continue to encourage people to report crimes to police. David, Laurel. Well, Blair Best reporting downtown. Thank you, Blair. And speaking of low level crime, just days after a cleanup effort in Portland's old town, new graffiti covered some of those freshly painted walls. How frustrating. This is what popped up at West Burnside and second this week. The Salvation Army owns the building and feeds homeless people meals here daily. Let us know it showed up just two days after this last Friday when the Salvation Army launched a new ongoing cleanup effort called One Block at a Time. They called their own building an eyesore with trash and graffiti, so they cleaned it up with the power of volunteers. They want to make that a regular thing, but it is hard for them to see it happen again so soon. It feels like for us that they're sending us the message that we, they don't care about the work that we do because I get it's a crisis and it's a difficult job to manage and handle, but it's also difficult on our side because it, there's a cost associated to it. There's a cost in the human cost in the sense of uh, labor, and then there's a cost in materials. Uh, a can of black paint costs $70. Well, let me just say this, we care. There is no set date for the next cleanup effort. A local organization that rescues animals needs help finding a crucial part of its operation. Puplandia Dog Rescue says someone stole a trailer from them. It was full of dog and cat food for the community. They say the theft happened in the parking lot of Vista Pet Hospital Sunday. When I got the call that the trailer had been moved or was missing, I just started crying. I couldn't believe it. We had just stocked it with $2,000 worth of food to get us through the whole month so that anybody could come and get food that needed it. So here's what to watch for. The trailer has a logo of two dogs on the sides and back. It also has windows on both sides and the passenger side is missing its fender. Contact authorities if you spot it. You can also visit puplandia.rescue.org in the meantime if you'd like to donate and help out. Today, the National Women's Soccer League and its Players Union released their long-awaited investigation surrounding abuse and manipulation of players, and it found, quote, widespread misconduct. Now, that includes turmoil within the Portland Thorns organization. So the investigation found Thorns leadership failed to properly address allegations of sexual misconduct and harassment brought forth by two former players against former head coach Paul Riley. Now, he coached the Thorns from 2013 to 2015. A separate U.S. soccer investigation released in October also reached that same conclusion. So the fallout here resulted in Thorns owner Merritt Paulson putting the team up for sale. Two executives losing their jobs. Riley, who was coaching the North Carolina Courage when the allegations were first publicly revealed last year, was fired. Tonight, a family is grieving the loss of their pets and their home. Monday evening, firefighter Brandon Miller responded to his own home in LeCenter after it went up in flames. Investigators don't know yet how the fire started, but Brandon's wife and four kids are safe. Unfortunately, their two dogs and two cats were lost in the fire, along with everything else, including their Christmas presents. It's pretty surreal to be one of the responders that responds on your own your own emergency at your own home and uh, be completely helpless. Well, the main thing is our, our family is safe and we're all together. So, uh, you know, just take it day by day. It's all we can do. Loved ones started a GoFundMe account to help Brandon and his family. We've posted a link on KGW.com. So far, they've raised almost $25,000. We're happening now. A public hearing is underway over another possible change to the I-5 Rose Quarter project. The goal is to ease traffic congestion to make the area safer for people walking, driving, or biking. Now, people with ties to the historic Albina neighborhood in that area will also be invited to speak tonight. That hearing is being streamed live on the Department of Transportation's YouTube channel. ODOT's latest project design is now expected to be released next week.